Ja. Oh, golly, dude. That, that was a big fish, dude. That was a big fish. Wow. Big fish, big fish. Really big. I remember, you know, whenever we first started fishing together and everything, and you was like, hey, I want to try this fly fishing thing. And, you know, I was, I was willing to take that task on, I believe. And um, when you first started casting, what, you probably couldn't get 10 foot maybe from the boat, maybe. And, and streamer fishing was definitely out of the question. You know, fast forward over, you know, a few year time span, we, uh, Went to some high water rigs, got a little bit more weight on the line for you. And then uh, we finally graduated to the streamer rod. And yeah, I mean, just to, to see Michael grow and a, as a fly fisherman, this all around fisherman uh, means a lot to me. And uh, this moment that we got to share, you know, we've had some heartbreaks in the in the past. We've had, uh, you know, we've, we've missed a lot of good fish over the past few years and uh, one in particular is that is that stripper uh, during that summer whenever we was floating the Holston and uh, we come up and saw the stripper <laughs> eat the streamer and uh, next thing you know it was gone and we mean you both were just like oh man this is our chance because we we targeted those things for a daggone month I feel like <laughs> and it was just like every little thing like the water conditions wasn't right or the generation wasn't right I mean we was constantly uphill battle with that so we've, we've kind of went all around. I mean, we went 360. We went from, you know, we fished small creeks together. We went for brook trout to a bow and arrow cast to, hey, Michael, I need you to double haul this line 40 foot to feed this dry fly to a trout that's rising. <laughs> um, you know, and it's, it's very special to see that and to see an angler go 360 like that. A lot of guides don't get to see that full picture. So when we started today, you know, it was that boarded, it was pretty daggone cold. Um, <laughs> I think maybe our islets might have froze up a time or two. Um, you know, we're essentially not very many people out there at all. Uh, I think we was the first ones through this tailwater and uh, we had a lot of heartbreaks happen very right off the bat. Um, we lost a, a pretty good fish um, right out of the gate of fishing together and we Got to see it, it was probably, it was pretty close to the one that we landed. You know, we, we caught some, we caught some other fish too in between this, uh, you know, that just some little dinkers. And we was, uh, we was about to wrap up our day. Um, the day was kind of coming to an end and, and uh, we actually saw this fish move and uh, looks like it may have come up and ate, eaten an emerger or uh, maybe a small uh, blue wing or something off the, off the surface. Coached, uh, coached Michael into, you know, hey, this is where we need to put this cast. This is what we need to do here to see if we can't get a good drift over this fish. And sure enough, we uh, put the first drift that we got through, indicator went down and Michael set the hook and I didn't think it was that fish, to be honest. I thought it might've been a, a secondary fish that we didn't see that might've been there with it. Um, Cause I still felt like we wasn't right on top of that fish where we thought it was. I thought we were still a few yards away from it. It's big. That's a huge brown. Yep. Oh my goodness, my heart's pounding. Yep. So we hooked this fish, we know it's big. And you know, I, me and Michael, when we catch fish, we just get excited. So when we catch a, when we hook or see, or even get a chance or a shot at a fish of, of this caliber, especially a brown trout, we're, we're both pretty daggone excited. So I, I see the I see the light bulbs in Michael's eyes at this point um, after he realizes how big this fish is. And I was like, man, I, I'm gonna have, we're gonna have to coach through this or we're not gonna land this fish. This is by far the biggest trout that I've ever hooked on a fly rod. So right now my heart's pounding. 
So at this point, I'm, I'm constantly watching Michael. I'm feeding off his body language as well. We had some access line laying in the boat and it is actually tangled around the my um, boat box at this point. And this fish is peeling off line at this, you know, going downstream. And I was like, I just happened to look down. I was like, dang, that, that's, gonna, that's gonna cause the end of this real quick. So as Michael's, you know, letting this fish do its thing and letting line out perfectly, um, I clear his line for him so it'll go up to the reel at this point. I got it to the reel. We're on the reel. But he is just nose down. Um, I think I even mentioned at one point, even though we checked the drag 1,500 times that morning, I was like, hey, check this. Give it just a little check real quick just to make sure. It's good. It's good. So, guys, right now he's directly under the boat and he's just going straight down. I don't know how we're gonna land this fish. Said, I don't know how we're gonna land this fish. I'm like, we're gonna get it this time. We're gonna get it this time. And, uh, you know, coaching up Michael and telling him that, you know, remain calm and, you know, pay attention and let's concentrate here. Let's make sure we're doing everything correct. Um, Cause I mean, that's a, you know, that's a once in a lifetime fish for a lot of anglers. Um, new and old. Yeah. He's head shaking. Don't like that. <sighs> so I had to make sure that my boat was angled correct for Michael. Um, the fish really didn't, couldn't decide if it wanted to be fought downstream or fought upstream. So there was a couple times that I really had to put on the brakes. Um, actually turned the boat at one point, and I do not like ever doing this too much, especially in flowing water. Is um, I don't like really turning my, my nose back upstream. And we had to do that a couple times and it was kind of one of those things now or never either turn the boat now and still have this fish or let michael you know get this fish behind him and it never it never pans out when that fish gets behind you yeah we was we was pretty well into the fight at this point and and this fish wasn't showing any signs of of really wanting to be um really of tiring at this point in the in the in the fight of this fish i, I felt like it's, we still had a few more minutes to go and uh i knew when it come to the net job uh, a lot of times you you make that mistake of wanting to net that fish too early and you know not getting that net that fish fully in the net or you know they see this big metal object coming towards their face and they're already scared to death because they're you know been you know hooked on a line for so long they just freak out and pan and it makes them even more panicky so it's thrashing around you're trying to net it a the fly could come unloose the line could break so i knew that we only had one and if we was lucky two shots of this fish so i, I wanted to be, make the first shot trying to net this fish the, the right shot so um you know, I, I went ahead and got off the oars after Michael was able to turn this fish at this point, and I, I felt like the fish was was pretty daggone at the end of his rope um, as far as the fighting aspect. And I seen the fish turn its head when he was able to All turn right. that fish's head he's coming up, he's with coming the fly up. rod. I knew right then that we we about had this fish whooped, and it was about about to be in our hands. He's on the surface. Oh yeah! Yeah! Whoa! Oh yeah! <laughs> look at that thing, dude! Look at the kite. <laughs> uh, I held it as long as I could, you know, because I was trying to be the call one, trying to help Michael coach him up, and uh, try to be almost motionless, emotionless, you know, because um, we've had those days, and I've had those days, you know. This does it go right? Are you, you know, it's. Almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, and we've had a lot of those days. Oh my God! Woo! <laughs> Let's go! Now, water magnifies everything, so it will fool you when it comes to the size of the fish. We knew it was a big fish to begin with, but when you put when you have that fish in the net and you go to lift it up out of the water, and, and you feel that it's a little bit of a strain for you to actually pick this this fish up, you're like, wow. Uh, this really was a big fish and getting to see it out of the water for the first time i mean it was it honestly shocked both of us i feel like um we're like wow this 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 brown trout is is a beautiful healthy male that you know very old very hard to catch a fish like this and then also been able to you know fully see that picture come together um you know and me and michael's friends also 
and uh, other than you know teaching and learning about fishing um, from each other and everything. So getting to put all that together and see that full picture, it was like the Mona Lisa got presented to you. Um, and I think that's a new nickname for that fish. I think I'm gonna call that fish the Mona Lisa because I got to see the full picture. That is a tank. Oh, that's a big fish, man. That is the biggest fish we've landed together, dude. Ever, I mean, that is. Let's go, baby. Guys, this fish is absolutely huge. I mean, there's a kipe on this thing. I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna get some shots of this that are unbelievable. The whole day was just made for that. Yeah. That was... Yep. <sighs> this is what we come for. That thing's huge. Well, dude, we've just constantly, just, we've constantly had error over error and bad yeah. luck and bad luck, yeah. missing fish, hung up. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's been, it's just been that. And then this guy. Yeah, that's a reward for not giving up yeah. right there. This shows you, you know, it ain't over until it's over. No.